Hey everyone, welcome back. So this video is going to be what to do after you've imported and organized your uh, photos into Lightroom. So this is the fun part, right? This is when we develop and edit our photos. First thing we want to do is uh, make sure we're in our collection that we want to use. We can obviously change this uh, in the same panel once we're in our develop module, but why not just start off on the right foot? I'm going to go into my travel photos. So right, I have my, uh, or we'll just call it the ice bar photo, I guess. And then on the right, we have our coconut man. <clears throat> Once I have my selection on my travel folder or my travel collections right on my left panel, I'm going to go to the top right and go to my module picker and pick the develop module, right? So now our workspace has changed. It's changed quite a bit. Now our workspace in particular is now just primarily focusing on one photo at a time. There's no option for tile view. If we wanted to switch our photos, we could go down to the film strip and we can select the one previous if we want. You'll notice, right, we have a lot of sliders on our uh, right panel. For all the textbook definitions, I suppose, of each, uh, each vocab word we can say. Um, please check Canvas. Um, we have a bunch of notes and resources there. But for this video, we are just going to primarily get into the technical, um, the technical know-how on how to edit uh, our photos. First things first, we're going to crop our image, right? This is not to say we always have to crop our image, but composition is vital, and sometimes we're just not able to get it in camera um, when we first take our photos. So. To enter our crop mode, we can either hit this little square on the left end of this bar, right? And you'll notice a grid pops up, right? A rule of thirds pops up. Or you can hit R to enter crop mode for shortcut, okay? Okay, so once in crop mode, before you actually start cropping, I wanna make sure that our lock, our little lock icon is actually locked and not unlocked, right? If it's unlocked, we have the flexibility to right, ignore um, uh, proportions, I guess you could say. That's what uh, a, lot of, a lot of other software use. But we can ignore proportions, and which is okay, but sometimes we then end up with like these really funky, um, you know, obviously you're never gonna do that, but we can might end up with some, some funky uh, proportions or ratios. So we're gonna make sure we lock into whatever we had. Um, so for example, if I hit original, right? You'll notice we have original or as shot, um, both kind of mean the same thing, just whatever format you originally photographed it on, so whatever settings your camera was on. So um, you also have this, right, one by one, we learned that means a square, so we could crop this as a square image, or, right, our two by three, or four by six, right? If you wanted to uh, do a two by three, but take it to a, uh, the other, to a vertical, Right, we just have to drag it until it snaps into place, right? So we can simply snap them into either horizontal or vertical um, compositions. Uh, now, I'm actually going to just oops, keep it at the original um, composition or the original settings, right? So I'm going to crop them down, though, for sure. And if you bring it to here, if you want to follow along, just try to get it to... You know, I guess what you see or what you like, really. So I might just keep it there, maybe a little tighter. Um, keep in mind, you can also rotate, right? You can rotate by hovering down to uh, the edges and um, by the handlebars. And basically, you want to look for a little wheel. And then you can kind of just rotate it as such. But for this one, I don't think we need to rotate. So I'm just going to accept it. To accept your crop, you either hit the crop icon again or just hit R. And then once you do, you'll accept it and now you're able to move on to your next um, next action right so here we go uh, we have our first slider exposure right how much light is let into the camera or in this case how much light can we actually add artificially to this image right so can we add an extra stop we can also take it down right again more exposure more light less exposure less light pretty self-explanatory for this one maybe go up half, so maybe a little quarter of a stop, let's say that. Um, contrast, contrast is the difference in tonal values. So exa for example, if I were to raise my contrast, it is somewhat similar to actually me expanding that, um, that, that difference, right? Um, but in this case, I might just add a little bit here. 
maybe crush the highlights, right? So oftentimes, remember again, what's the difference between highlights and whites, right? Highlights are the bright areas on the frame, just like whites are, except highlights maintain detail. So for example, if I crush them all the way down, which I think I will need to do, um, it shows out some of that detail in the pineapple, or not pineapple, the coconut shavings. So actually, I think I'll lower this guy down a little bit too. And then shadows, do I wanna bring out the shadows? Do I wanna raise the shadows? Um, really keep in mind again, the difference between shadows and the black values, right? Is that shadows again, are the dark portions of the screen or the frame, the image, but they still also maintain details, right? So I'm actually going to maybe, there we go. Okay, and then for the whites, maybe push it down a little bit too. Do I wanna brighten up the image a little bit? I wanna maybe give it more contrast. There we go. So texture and clarity, right? If we raise it, we notice that we bring out a lot of the grit, right? A lot of that uh, surface level properties that we associate with presence. Um, so I'll raise it a little bit, right? It's entirely up to you what you wanna do. But for example, if I lower my clarity all, all the way down, everything gets really soft and out of focus. Whereas if I raise my clarity, right? Everything may become sharper, contrast may be raised, right? Things actually may become uh, less exposed the more I, I, I raise it, right? So again, it's just entirely up to you and how much you want to add. Um, maybe I'll do about 41, I'm sure. Dehaze for clearing up uh, atmospheric haze. In this case, we don't really have any, but if we raise it, we can actually raise our contrast a little bit more too now. Remember the difference between vibrance and saturation? Well, so if I raise my saturation all the way up, we'll notice that all the colors in my image, the intensity of all the uh, colors in my image is raised, whereas opposed to raising my vibrance, only certain colors get raised, right? So the difference between vibrance and saturation is that sa saturation is the intensity of all colors, whereas vibrance really works more for the muted colors, like the, um, let's say, the, the, uh, the kind of blue-grayish, Kind of sweater and then the you know the color of the, the the bamboo back there right so okay great so how do we check to see the progress of our photo um, easy we can just hit y for shortcut right so we can take a look we can even zoom in simultaneously if we what and we can see the changes that we've made that maybe help us so you can especially notice that Maybe uh, we've saved some of the detail in the, the coconut shavings. So for the time being, I think this simple edit is good. Um, it works. So uh, tune in for the next video to get a little help on um, how to export your, your photos. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.